I'm so scared. Oh God, that's really reassuring, Dave. <laughs> It's kind of like his conscience. Make me feel safe and coddled. <laughs> you look at you like you are from what we're showing up. <laughs> we're here. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Oh. <laughs> Welcome. Go. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. <laughs> How are you, Dr. Normal? <laughs> I'm doing great. Let's go. Let's roll. <laughs> This evening, we are joined by the co-founders of OS Bridge, a conference here in Portland about open source, uh, Audrey Etre and Selena Deckelman. Hello. Thank you. Hello. How are you guys? Very good. Thanks for having us. Good. Oh, now you have microphones. Yes. I do. Oh, nice. oh it sounds so nice. So what is the Open Source Bridge Conference? It is a conference uh, all about open source and uh, how, specifically about how to be an open source citizen. So we've invited, you know, people from all over, it turned out all over the world to come and uh, talk to each other and people in Portland uh, about open source software. So for the first year of a conference, this is an ambitious undertaking. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's three days. Yeah. yeah. It's at the convention center. Yes. And only two of those days are actually scheduled. Right. That's right. Yeah. We um, are big fans of the unconference format. We mm -hmm. think that uh, that's been part of what makes Portland such a cool place to be in the mm -hmm. tech community. So we really wanted to uh, introduce people, you know, hopefully, hopefully people that have never experienced an unconference before um, to the format and, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully we'll see it happen more at larger conferences because mm -hmm. there's a, so um there are other conferences out there that have tried to have an unconferency type thing in parallel to regular sessions and so we decided that we didn't we didn't want to do that we just wanted to to make the unconference be be a big part it's own thing. thing yeah be yeah because it's, it's hard to make people pick right you know you've got the yeah. scheduled sessions and they know they're going to be mm -hmm. yeah, that's what they're there for so telling them okay step aside and do this unconference thing where you're not sure what you're getting is a little hard, but things like uh, Where 2.0 that has WearCamp afterward work really well mm -hmm. because people go for three days and they talk about all of this stuff that's happening at the sessions and then they have a, um, an actual format to continue with that and say, oh, I want to build this now. Yeah, and we thought one really important thing was bringing people together for a couple days, you know, with the scheduled sessions, mm -hmm. and then also having basically a unconference boot camp uh, Thursday night, so, you know, people can come and, and learn in kind of a lightning format uh, what what unconference scheduling is like and how how to pick topics and things like that yeah, ahead of time. So that's and when the board is going to so go up. We, no, uh, so we're going to do like a, a test run for people who've okay. never done an unconference before oh. on Thursday night. Yeah. Okay. So that's the boot camp. And if you've been to an unconference like Portland Bar Camp, then you could come help out. But you, I mean, you might skip that one, but come on Friday morning so mm -hmm. you can actually help schedule. Yeah. yeah. Very, very cool. So for people who aren't clear on what an unconference is, no one in Portland needs to know. <laughs> yeah, you all know this, we, right? In You've Portland, we all know. Yeah. But what is an unconference? So an unconference is an event like a conference where everyone comes together to talk about a certain topic. But unlike a conference, it doesn't have an advanced planned schedule. So instead, we create a grid to put topics on and people say, okay, I'm really interested in this, so I'm going to host a session on uh, chicken raising, for example. <laughs> and how to get them killed. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I usually indeed. leave the killing part until off until yeah. later. But. Yeah. Um, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of gave it away. Spoiler. So, and, you know, you put your topic up on the board, you, uh, you sort of go around, you talk to people, you kind of recruit people for your session, you know, explain what this is about. And then when the session time comes, whoever shows up is the people you needed and you have a, a conversation or, a, you know, some kind of a show and tell around that. And one, one big thing, too, about that format is we, we ask people to vote with their feet. You know, like if you're in a session that you're not 
really getting anything out of or you know maybe it wasn't what you expected we just you know pe- people need to go and find the group of people that they want to be with so, they need to find the right fit yeah, yeah yeah and you know we're trying to empower people to to seek out um people with common interests basically um while they're there and i mean my experience i've i've just i've had a great time you know we've mm-hmm. we've done uh wear camp here in portland um and bar camp a few times and um cyber camp last year yeah cyber camp yeah, and cyber camp cool was stuff. fun yeah, yeah. so yeah. Anyway, we, we think it's a great format, and uh, it definitely, I think, has brought the Portland tech community closer together. Mm-hmm. I think it would probably have a similar effect on the people that are coming for our conference. So, yeah. so uh, let's just take a step back for a moment. What was the impetus? Why did we need to have OS Bridge? Well, um, this year we actually lost a couple big tech conferences here in Portland. So um, uh, OSCon used to be here, and it had been here for several years. Um, and the the Ruby conference, Rails Conf, mm-hmm. Rails yeah. conference here, but um, they they moved to Las Vegas. So you know there was there was kind of a, a gap, you know, in the summertime uh, this summer. And uh, when when we were at um, this was actually the Cube Space conference wasn't it that we had we uh, had side project to start up yes yeah, you, you were thinking about that before we even found out that oscon wasn't coming back yeah um, yeah you, you've been thinking about like how do we restructure a conference to be um, more grassroots yeah for a long time it's true it's true um so a couple like a couple years ago actually a friend and i um had had been talking about you know if if we could run our ideal tech conference you know what would it be and so we had this google doc you know that we would keep like adding things to and you know who would the speakers be that we would invite you know so we had this this whole kind of plan laid out but didn't really have like a catalyst to to drive us forward mm-hmm. um and then when we were at side project to start up appropriately enough uh a bunch of people were there uh that got together in a room and we sketched out all this crazy stuff about here's all of these different user groups that are in town. Um, here are all of the conferences that we've had in Portland. Here are all the resources that are out there, like Portland State. Um, you know, we have Ward Cunningham that lives here in town. Linus Torvalds lives here. Mm-hmm. You know, we have all these big names in the open source world um, right here, uh, living and working in Portland. You know, why, why couldn't we have, um, have our own open source conference? So how's it going? <laughs> It's been a really interesting, I don't mean that like in a sarcastic way, but yeah. a huge learning experience. Yeah, you know, there's, for sure. um, because we've both worked on, on conferences before and smaller kinds of events. And you've done PGCon, which is a few hundred person right? Yeah, so kind of deal. But I, yeah. I think the, the reach and the ambition of this is so much bigger than anything I've worked on, definitely. Yeah. And so there's just so much to, um, to sort through and keep track of. And, and also this is, and I, I think this is not... Uh, the normal way to go, but this is a completely volunteer run conference, which is normal for some of the smaller right. conferences that we have. But it's, yeah, and it's a lot to do on volunteer time. Yeah, I, I definitely appreciate why people have staff members yeah. for these sorts of things. Because yeah. we've all put in a lot. We've of... both been really excited about this intern talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can't get interns. None of us have an office. Is the problem? <laughs> Apparently, you only get an intern if you have a real office. Yeah, we, we need the lobby we... of the convention center. I know. We need it. We need an open source bridge lobby <laughs> that we can put interns in. So, how many people are you expecting at the conference? How many people have already um, registered? So, for registration, strictly registration wise, I, I think we're somewhere around three hundred, maybe a little bit less than that. That includes like speakers and everybody else is going to be there um uh we think we're pretty we're pretty sure we're probably gonna have 500 um as far as people that are going there we're uh, waiting for the last minute portland crowd to yeah you know settle yeah put in there (laughs) put in their last minute registrations so so yeah so that's that's what we're thinking it's going to end up um with and uh you know in general it's been a rough rough year for conferences yeah um a few a few of the really specialty one you know the, the postgres community has actually had an okay time of it but again it hasn't been like a growth curve mm-hmm. they they were really happy to have the same number of people or mm-hmm. slightly more show up again so and we've uh, been hearing that from other conferences too where yeah i think not just uh, us. brad smith said something along the lines of and i'm completely paraphrasing that, but that stability is the new growth as far as conferences <laughs> go yeah <laughs> yes that's true so we're doing something new which means we don't have Pink a stability level hands. we're just yeah. like okay we think we're going to be here yeah. So, yeah is it normal i know you guys i i assume that there were people that you said hey we've got to get this person to talk and that you contacted them and said hey you have to come talk but then you also accepted proposals mm-hmm. right. much like night 
Yes, yeah. So um, we were really lucky to have um, Egal uh, Koshvoy and uh, Reed Beals working on the software, um, and they uh, put together. Uh, well, we we actually did kind of a traditional software development plan for this. Even mm-hmm. um, so, we we started out with the software that came from Ignite uh, Portland. Well, before that. We looked at like all the existing open source conferences. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, we did. so we spent like two weeks looking at all that and going, I don't understand why it's missing yeah. this feature that we need. Yeah. And and he goes going, Well, I have this proposal system from uh, you know, from Ignite. Right, yeah. right. So he started looking at how can I make it, you know, like generalize this and make open conferenceware yeah. that would handle like Ignite all the way to our kind of event where it's got multiple tracks and uh, so I mean all of the Yeah, so from that complaint the list then we have yeah. a feature list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you know, I mean, we actually we laid out timelines, you know, so there were certain deadlines that corresponded, yeah, you know, all these milestones, yeah, corresponded mm-hmm. to when you know certain things were going to happen, like proposal announcements, and so anyway, um, then we started having uh, some code sprints associated with that, um, and then and then recently, it's mostly been uh, Egal and and Reed working on working mm-hmm. on things to get, get hard working guys, yeah. yeah, well, and working on code that we're using like the week that they finish it mm-hmm. yeah you know so everything has gone straight into production there's yeah. no like uh, you know there's a, a no brief debugging testing period well they're, they're well, pretty good about that but mm-hmm. um it, it really is a testament i think to test driven development yeah you know just to do a little plug there for test yeah writing tests it, they they work that way mm-hmm. um and a lot of the, the volunteers that come in to help write the code they write tests uh, and I think it's very much contributed to the quality of the releases. And then we really haven't had any of these like huge failures, you know, with the right. site, you know, they don't mm-hmm. deploy code and have a crash ever, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's been extremely stable. We've also had some great um, web hosting from Network Redux and they've been really good to us when we've had, uh, you know, some spikes in traffic. And, and some hardware failures were, yeah, yeah. some hardware failures <laughs> and things like that. They've, they've just been awesome. So yeah. for us, like on, on the tech side, we've, we've definitely felt the love, you know, from, from people mm-hmm. in the community coming together. And then also, um, uh, it's been neat just seeing people that we didn't know, you know, mm-hmm. that'll just show up at a code sprint, you know, we're having at a coffee shop. It's super cool. You know, some guy, uh, never heard of him. He just moved here from Australia or whatever. And he's like, hey, you know, I just wanted to check things out and, and mm-hmm. you know, contribute a little code for the day. So, and maybe yeah, just cool. get an introduction to what we're doing. You yeah. know, like, I think meeting a person is uh, so key, which is why we're having a conference, right? Not some like blogging online only event. Yeah. But and you really need to meet pe- people and talk to them in person and uh, get to know them. And so code sprints give you like this this totally techie way to do that. Okay. Yeah, and that's a big part of the conference as well. You know, we've invited a lot of people who are, are developers, who mm-hmm. are leaders in um, development projects, uh, and we've encouraged them to um, have code sprints at, at the event um, to, you know, give a talk on whatever it is that they work on and then, you know, invite people over to the hacker lounge or, you mm-hmm. know, just, you know, fire up their laptops in the hallway or whatever and, and get some hacking done. That's That will that will just make me very excited and happy to see people coming together around that and finding projects that they're really interested in to work on. I want to talk for just a moment about the speakers, but then we're going to move on to the, the code sprints and the hackers lounge, because that's a very cool feature that you guys have uh, put into this. Sure. So you had the speakers, you asked the people that you needed to speak, you took the submissions, you announced the speakers, mm-hmm. and I'll have you give me a few of those in a minute. But then you did something that I thought was really great. You encouraged everyone who didn't have their, um, their talk chosen to then come in for the end conference and say, hey, you already know what you want to talk about. You already know, you know, that there's a, a place for it. Please come in on that day and bring it and put it up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had so much uh, good content proposed to begin with, you know. And it was rough. Where, uh, there was yeah. a lot on the cutting room floor. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then there, and we like, sorry, X. We actually expanded the schedule to accommodate it because mm-hmm. there was just so much where we're going, I want to see this talk. You yeah. Know? So uh, it just, it would be a shame to lose that, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you're passionate enough about it that you told us, you put in a proposal. So, I mean, why not come and really, you know, tell people even in the unconference, this is why I like this. This is well, why I work with this. And we're not perfect either, right? You know, so we may have missed something really freaking cool. So yeah. I And things I hope... change in three months. Yeah, That's the other it's thing, true. You know? yeah. We can't plan for everything. So no, really, you know. Why don't you tell us what the three tracks are? Five? Five. <laughs> <laughs> Bad A lot of hose. colors. <laughs> <laughs> tell us what the five tracks are. <laughs> Uh, well, the three. the first two, well, C's, right? So yeah, we have uh, cooking, cooking, chemistry, and culture. Those were the, yeah. those were what I was thinking. And then of. business and hacks. I was just two. thinking of the first three. Yeah, yeah. yeah we were we, trying to come with five and C's, and it got yeah. really contrived. Yeah, five okay. C's would have been, yeah. yeah, 
No, I'm glad we didn't do that. Some kind of a weird Soviet project. Yeah. Yeah. The five C's of open source branch. (laughs) We will go to our underground bunker. It's very much a cult. No, um, yeah, so let's see. So uh, the cooking and uh, chemistry tracks were something we were really excited about when we came up with those names. So Mm -hmm. what we were trying to get across there was that the difference between like theory and practice. Mm -hmm. And rather than trying to silo different technologies um, into a track like, you know, Perl or Ruby or Python, you know, that that often happens in conferences. And Um, then you end up with 20 tracks because you're trying to cover every like every technology. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. We were trying to get people to, to cross those language boundaries more Um, because that's something that happens in portland you know a lot of times you'll see people who go to like the pearl user group they'll show up at the python one and be Mm -hmm. you know hacking on something that they want to talk about so we're hoping to Mm -hmm. encourage more of that um and get people you know crossing those language uh boundaries more and then um yeah and then just kind of uh have have a clearer forum for the in practice type Mm -hmm. talks Mm -hmm. uh because i i feel like in in some conferences, oftentimes the the very practical, um, you know, I I took this you know web framework and now I'm gonna make a drinking game out of it, you know, like those types of talks they don't make it in, you know, yeah. and that's too bad. So yeah. <laughs> we're happy to enable that. Very good. Yeah. Getting the tutorials. The cooking yeah. track was by far the most popular for submissions, you know, because mm-hmm. um, really what you do most of the time it's it's not theory, it's the practice of yeah. of writing the code and putting these things together. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that just, you know, reflects the state of practice in the programming world as well. You know, it's a lot of people experimenting, a lot of new things out there that, that people mm-hmm. want to share. Like, I just tried this and did this here. Have a look, you know. So I, I, I don't know. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And so do you want to talk about uh, hacks? Yeah. Wait, first, I want you to tell oh, me sorry. a few of the speakers, a few of the talks that you think are going to be a draw for people. Uh, well, one really big one is uh, Rasmus Lerendorf, who's the original uh, developer of PHP, mm-hmm. original architect, um, is coming to give his state of PHP talk at our conference, which mm-hmm. is very cool. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that was a really good one. Um, there were a couple like <laughs> one of my <laughs> one of my favorite. Uh, it, I, I'm not going to get exactly the title right, but it has asshole in the title and um, it's from Donnie Burkle. Assholes are killing your project. Yes, assholes are killing yeah. your project. <laughs> So, um, so I met Donnie at um, the Google Mentor Summit. Uh, mm-hmm. So the Google Summer of Code, um, they have a they get all the mentors for the different open source projects together once a year. But anyway, Donnie led a great session on um, how how to deal with jerks, basically, mm-hmm. like in in your and this was in a non conference format, but it was it was fantastic. People telling these really great stories and uh, you know venting a little bit, but also you know kind of. Uh, working through, you know, yeah. all of these these interpersonal problems that we end up having in open source projects. Those two, I'm I'm pretty excited about. Very cool. Yeah, and uh, well, speaking of Google, Cat and Leslie from yeah, Kat and Leslie. Uh, Google's open source department are going to do an introduction to open source, like how you get involved and why, and uh, just like a basic breakdown for beginners. Yeah. So that'll be really great. Yeah, Leslie's Leslie's an awesome speaker and um and, and so is Kat. And Kat's Kat's been involved um in the Unix and open source world for a very long time. Mm-hmm. She's um on the board of Usenix, uh which is a organization that runs runs several conferences, the Usenix conference and, and Lisa, which is one of the original conferences that I ever attended, which is really fun. Um but yeah, so they're they're great and they actually gave uh kind of a short, very interactive version of that talk um, at the MySQL conference. And it was it was really neat because there there were people coming to that conference who kind of come from the proprietary database world and they have no idea. You mm-hmm. know, they're like, who are these crazy people? You know, like, what are they doing? What is open source? Open source community. <laughs> yeah, they're just, yeah. They, they honestly, they just have never experienced it before. You know, like, why are people working for free? I don't get it, you mm-hmm. know? And, well, and how do I get the resources that I need to use? Right. Like in the case of MySQL, how do I... How do know, I ask I questions? So that I, yeah. Hey, who, who do I talk to to find out the answer type mm-hmm. stuff? And, mm-hmm. you know, if I find something that I want to contribute, then how do I do that? You know, mm-hmm. and I mean, just just explaining how mailing lists work, you know, like that, that basic information. There's still a lot of people out there that just have no idea. You know, you, you subscribe to this mailing list and you're supposed to send a message out to 100,000 people that you don't know. And they're going to somebody read it may and, help you with your question or yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did I ask wrong? I yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> so and and just, that out. yeah, working through that whole thing. I mean, it it was it was really cool um, conversation to have, and it was you know they're probably like 
uh, 10 of us, you know, sitting around a table chatting about it. But anyway, I, I think they'll, they're, they'll give a great talk. Mm -hmm. And now hacking and the Hacker's Lounge. Yes. yes. Where did the idea for the Hacker's Lounge come from? And what, in case someone doesn't know, what, what exactly is the Hacker's Lounge? So we have this space mm -hmm. at the top of the Hilton downtown, mm -hmm. and it's big. And it will have tables and hacking. Uh, it, the idea, I mean, every conference that I've been to, one of the best things is that hallway space where you sit around and, but they kick you out eventually. Yeah. So uh, ours is 24 hours. <laughs> so it's just a big giant room with a great view. Yes. Yes. Where you can go 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. You've got access. Yes. You've got people. Hang out, work on your project, collaborate with people, um, not sleep if you really don't want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And have that kind of community space, too, because um, with the hotel and the hotels downtown, the conference center is just across the river. So that way we've got like two clear hubs for people to go between instead of wandering around Portland going, how yeah. do I, where do I, I run go? into you guys? Yeah. So just take the max train across mm -hmm. and bingo, you're where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Now you guys also have some events going along with Web Visions. One of them is this week. The, oh, oh, I'm the, sorry, the, OS the, Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Normal staring at me like, Cammie, that was last week, sweetie. We're all done you with that now. You guys are so busy. You're just as busy as we are. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Free advertising for the other conference. Which you for guys next partnered year. with. Which you guys partnered yes, with. Yes, we did. To, we did. to give people a, a break. Yeah, just yeah. kind of yeah. registration for both. Um, but that's not why I said that. I just slipped the tongue. Um, you have a Lunch 2.0 coming up. Yes. With the web trends. Right. Yep. And we're actually in there uh, the day before, Wednesday, we're having a volunteer orientation meeting for everybody who wants to volunteer on site. If you'd like to volunteer on site at OS Bridge. Yes. Which is a really good idea. <laughs> Not the conference that was so last week. Volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> but, so that'll be Wednesday, uh, was that June 3rd? Yeah, this I week? think it is. It is the 3rd. The 5th is Friday. The yes. fourth is Thursday. Yeah, know, seven p.m. Web trends. Seven p.m. at Web. You show trends. up. You get yourself on the schedule. If you volunteer eight hours and you can't afford to come to the conference, we'll let you in free. Fantastic. You have yep. to do your eight hours, though. No you cheating. Have to do <laughs> no <laughs> slacking. <laughs> you'll know. You'll know who you are if you yes. cheat. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you'll feel really, really bad about it. You will not be able to sleep at night <laughs> if you were currently or previously able to sleep, you will no longer be able to sleep. Um, and then on <laughs> Thursday... On Thursday, we have the Lunch 2.0. Which right. is an odd day for a Lunch 2.0. Because it's usually earlier than Wednesday. It's usually on a Wednesday, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Sorry. So that Jake is... Jake isn't here, so we can't ask him how that got scheduled. I don't know. I saw and I was like, on <laughs> Thursday, really? <clears throat> so Web, web uh, Trends yes. is hosting yes. the OS Bridge Lunch 2.0. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is another great opportunity to come and talk to us. And there's also and going to be um, on Friday after the conference mm -hmm. at Web Trends. Is this public blog? knowledge yet? I don't know. The beer and blog for the I think it is. Yeah. Justin will uh, forgive we're getting, me. We're it's getting not. some nods. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay. on Friday after the conference, uh, you go from the conference across the river to Web Trends for beer and blog, mm -hmm. and then after beer and blog, you go up to the Hackers Lounge for the after party, which is across the street. By which the way. is across, across the, street. the street. Which will be hosted by Strange Love Live. Yes. yes. She'll be fabulous. <laughs> Doctor Normal just heard our name. He's like, what? and then you will sleep all weekend, probably. <laughs> and then I will sleep <laughs> all <laughs> weekend. <laughs> yes, we'll have that in common. Everyone, where's everybody? Yes, where Sorry, are all we the? We just can't. Where are all out. the Always Bridge volunteers? Where's Strange Love Live? They're taking a nap. <laughs> we gave them cookies and warm milk. Oh yeah, yeah. That nap is gonna be good. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's just, Definitely. you know, I, don't, I would say let's take a moment to think about the nap, but I think I'll get in trouble with Dr. Normal. So <laughs> tell us, tell us, um, you've had uh, time scheduled in the Hackers Lounge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, one of the first things that we got scheduled was uh, uh, Chris Messina's uh, Die So project was going to do some kind of a hackathon. So Distributed social... Social, I don't remember. Yeah, so I only remember the acronym now, but I mean, it's basically about social networking and different organization, ways that you can maybe. <laughs> well, and taking your friends list with you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So not being locked into Facebook or MySpace or anything like that, but having a portable friends list, portable uh, activity streams, mm -hmm. yeah. your feeds from Twitter. And and what's cool about that mm -hmm. is that we also invited um, Evan from Laconica. I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name because it is French and I will butcher it, <laughs> but uh, there's this service that you may 
probably most people that are listening to this have heard of, but it's called Identica. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's like Twitter, but um, it's based on an open source uh, project called Laconica. And it pulls everything. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, (laughs) you can set up your own Laconica server and, uh, and federate to it or not. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, so there are going to be other people interested in this um, taking your friends with you concept. So we're hoping that Mm -hmm. some good, some good action some good life. Federated identity. Yeah, federated identity hacking action occurs. <laughs> and then we also have uh, Sunlight Labs, which is like an open democracy project. The Apps for Democracy thing is... Um, right, I the, saw that the other day. Uh, really I'm cool. going to totally mess up the details. But it's basically like a government data initiative to take, uh, so like this data duck of information mm-hmm. and uh, create applications that make use of it in some way. And so Sunlight Labs is one of the key... Uh, organizations within that, and they're going to be doing something in our hacker lounge as well. Yeah, around yeah. their projects. That's awesome. And then the Pearl group, I saw, I saw mm-hmm. that there had been uh, maybe seven or eight groups that had already signed up to do something in there. So mm-hmm. it uh, it already is is shaping up to be to be sweet and awesome. Yes. So each of you, if you've got one thing that you really hope for for the conference, um. Because it's your first, it's the first year, and it's one of those things that it's going to go really, really well. I know it is. <laughs> I know it is. Yes. But it's 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 a test run. Mm-hmm. So what your best hope? What could happen? People come and they meet people they wouldn't have talked to otherwise. They get to work with, or collaborate with somebody that they it just didn't know to ask. Mm-hmm. Uh, no crying. That's no true. crying. No crying in, the in open source yeah. yeah, no crying in open source. We're all we're all gonna tough it out together. <laughs> no sleep deprivation I, or no. Yeah, sleep deprivation <laughs> or no. No, I'm I'm actually I think that the best thing that's come out of it is the core team of people that, have, for me, you know, being able to work with the people on the team that's running the conference. They're mm-hmm. all people that um, I knew kind of, you know, from the community, um, but now we really know each other really well. <laughs> and, too well? Uh, <laughs> Sounds like maybe too well. <laughs> See comments no. recrying. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I think um, I think it's been amazing just to see how good people are at the things that they do mm-hmm. and and also how um, how dedicated uh, people in our community are toward toward uh, I'm going to say community like a million times here, but but just just toward that like their community. Yeah, yeah, right. just dedicated toward toward creating another community, you know, mm-hmm. and um, bringing people together and showing other folks from out of town you know what portland's about and why it's so great like i i just love the fact that that that's that's what's binding us together and that's Mm -hmm. um that's what we're trying to do and what do you guys still need volunteers Volunteers. and sponsors yeah sponsor money would be good (laughs) yes more money so that we can you know have money to do things yeah yeah food you know i mean it means pay for the coffee and not worry that we're not getting Wi-Fi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Food, food, food translates yeah. into bandwidth and coffee. We so, really, really money. need that yeah. bandwidth. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> For because the streaming. we're going to be streaming live there. <laughs> so somebody pony up the cash so that Strange of Live can interview people. Yes. yes. But yeah, yeah conferences are, are like a order of magnitude more expensive than non-conferences. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So it's you need money experience. and volunteers. If you yes. have money, give it to them. And for people to <laughs> show up. If you have volunteer time, give it to them. And if yeah. you and yes, they need people to show up. That would be that would be unpleasant. So that would be the saddest thing, right? We yeah. have this conference with really, really awesome speakers and nobody and shows talking up. to like an empty room. <laughs> yeah. So, so don't make with, that happen, okay? Sure. Yeah. You know, and another thing that um, we've been asking people to do is um, you know, blog about talks that they're excited about Mm -hmm. um that helps us you know in terms of planning you know like where where are we going to stick a particular talk and it helps get the word out to other people like here's this great Mm -hmm. collection of of talks of speakers and you know other other people should check it out so yeah that definitely helps us volunteer sponsor attend and blog about it Mm -hmm. yeah where can we find each of you individually on the internet um, well, I have a blog that is difficult to say called uh, chestnote.com. It means garlic in Russian. So that's <laughs> that's mainly where I blog at. And Bacon and, and Tech. You're oh, bacon yeah. And, and Bacon tech. and Tech. Bacon and Tech. I work on that with Gabrielle Roth, who runs the local Code and Explode group. And you're at Selena Marie on Twitter. That's right. At Selena Marie. Mm-hmm. Audrey? I have lifeofaudrey.com with links to everything else, including the Twitter. 
Which is at Spinnerin. Yeah. I can't have the show without <laughs> saying the Twitter names. It just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty important. What's the OS Bridge Twitter account? It's at OS Bridge. And what's the OS Bridge bot? You'll have to ask it's OS Bridge bot. Freaking awesome. Think. Yeah. <laughs> Best robot ever. All right, I'm asking OS Bridge bot <laughs> <Yeah>. later. <laughs> OS Bridgebot. Do I have a camera? No. <laughs> I don't think OS Bridgebot has a camera, but OS Bridgebot can talk. OS Bridgebot? <laughs> what are you? What are you, OS Bridgebot? It's killing me. I can get you a reply in a second. <laughs> I, I think we'll get a reply is during the after OS hours. Bridgebot is in, is in the house. Watching, please, so. please ask OS Bridgebot. OS Bridgebot's um, always watching. And also, Seriously. where can we find the OS Bridge conference? Where's the website? opensourcebridge.org opensourcebridge.org and now just one more thing I want you to give the dates and times for the conference itself so uh, June 17th through 19th which I'll never forget because June 17th is my husband's birthday happy birthday I gave him a conference this year for his birthday (laughs) that's like when Dr. Normal gave me a podcast for Christmas (laughs) yeah I think it is kind of similar poor guy yeah, he's a teacher, so he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so the 17th through the 19th in June, um, and we're starting bright and early, I think, at 9 a.m. on the 17th. Oi. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's Next week, it. we do not have a live episode, but if you uh, if you come on to the stream, I'm sure we'll have something fun. Stay tuned for After Hours. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody.